Hi, everyone. I hope I'm going to get some slides here. Not because I don't want to have a super chatty session, but there are a few things I want to show pictures of. So hopefully this will work. Great. So I'm going to start where David left off. What do we mean by artificial intelligence? Uh, this is a buzzword um, that's being used all over the place. And I think it means at least two distinct things. One is narrow artificial intelligence, where we don't know how to do something. We humans do it, but we don't know how to write software to do it. So we just give some software a million examples and say, figure it out. Here are a million examples, uh, and a neural network will train it, be trained uh, to sort out the answers. So narrow AI and machine learning does that. AGI is the stuff of science fiction. Uh, it's software that thinks in open-ended, general, creative ways, where you build it to solve one problem, and it comes back and solves a different one. Like, like a smart employee will. So most of the hype is about genuine progress that's happened in narrow AI. But there's also a lot of speculation about the general kind of AI. And these things are bundled together in this conversation. So I'm going to try and disentangle that a little bit. Why is everyone so worked up about the narrow kind? Um, the answer is it does things that we couldn't do before. So I work on privacy. It's one of, one of the many things I work on. Um, and so I might be curious, for instance, about what conversations around privacy look like in China, because the conversations are very different from, from those in the United States where I live. Um, so I might go and try and read about privacy in Baidu Baike, which is the Chinese version of Wikipedia, because Wikipedia is censored there. Um, and previously, I just couldn't read that, because I don't speak Mandarin. Um, I've actually got access now to a pretty decent translation. If you look at um, what existed, say, 10 years ago, and then what Google Translate, which uses neural machine translation, does now, we're not there yet. But we're making quite spectacular progress. The text on the left is, is from 10 years ago, uh, and it's basically word salad that is somehow about privacy. The text on the right is starting to get to a point where you could, with a little bit of patience, sit down and read a text in Chinese and make sense of it. Another example of where narrow AI is making progress is this is a thing called the neural algorithm for style. What you can do is feed into this, uh, this neural network that you can clone off GitHub uh, an image that provides some style and then a photograph or, or an image you want to be restyled. So here on the screen, you see what happens if you take a photograph of the Golden Gate Bridge and restyle it according to the styles of different artists. And so you get your image transformed in, into an Escher painting uh, or into Munch's The Scream or into Frida Kahlo's work. So on one hand, this is just Photoshop filters. On the other hand, previously, Photoshop filters had to be written by expert programmers who spent a lot of time doing this. This is an automatic generator of Photoshop filters. You just show it the style, and it figures out how to clone it. Third example, this is compression algorithms using uh, narrow AI techniques. So if you look at the, there are lots of different images here, but look at maybe just the red shoes, so the red high heel shoes there. Um, there's a picture of a shoe, and then below it, you see what happens if you get a low-quality JPEG file of that shoe. It gets blurry and blocky. Below those two JPEGs are neural compressed versions of the shoe. Those files are a tenth the size of the JPEGs, and yet they look much better. It's like a faithful reproduction of the shoe. If you crank the compression ratio up even further to like a 20th the size of the JPEG, you start to get errors. But instead of looking blocky, suddenly a red high heel turns into a red flat soled shoe, because the <laughs> algorithm didn't have enough information to remember what kind of shoe it was. So this is like new and genuinely sort of mind-boggling stuff that people are doing with neural networks. Um, and uh, especially interesting is the fact that it's not all of these different problems that are being solved are being solved with a very small number of algorithms. It's not like a completely new algorithm every time. It's basically two or three different machine learning techniques that are being customized uh, to these problems. So this is new. Uh, it's going to open up a lot of new business models. It's also going to make our lives more complicated. I'm going to show a few examples of that. Um, so how do we fund the web today? Uh, right now, it's basically funded by surveillance and advertising. Uh, all of these companies get your data and show you ads based on this. Um, it's basically the private sector version of what the NSA does. They have all this data on you. Um, fortunately, right now, they don't really know very much about you. Um, you couldn't build that much of a totalitarian state that easily with these companies' data. You'd need a lot of human analysts to sift through it. That will be totally automatable. Um, 
Uh, and if we let the, pri the advertising industry just go, you know, uh, open season on our data, we will have a, a serious um, uh, problem with the next totalitarian state that comes along and takes that data. Uh, so I think there's a role for governance to say, well, maybe we should be funding the web in some other way here. Um, uh, incentivizing privacy compatible versions of this thing, or actually funding some totally different business model. Another interesting example uh, is about bias. So here are two great business models. Uh, one is use machine learning to make smarter business decisions. Maybe you're an insurance company, you want to know what premiums to charge people. Uh, another business model is to advise governments that need to make decisions on how to make those decisions better. Unfortunately, this can and does go horribly wrong. Here are two headlines from ProPublica that's done a great job of reporting on, on, on this world, uh, showing that if you, if you price insurance premiums using machine learning algorithms, you can wind up charging uh, the same equivalent people 30% more depending on their race. Uh, all the other variables are the same. Uh, you just had, uh, you got your algorithm wrong. Uh, companies selling data to governments to make decisions about criminal justice have a similar problem that, a, you know, in the United States, a black man and a white man who otherwise are identical will have wildly different risk scores uh, that are being used to make decisions about them, and governments are paying for this. So the problems here are the sources of these data that the machine learning systems are trained on are, are terrible and biased themselves. There's another thing called omitted variable bias. Get your data science and statistician people to always go and look at that if you're, if you're going to build a machine learning business model because you can get this wrong. Um, and lastly, here's a cute one, working on privacy again. Um, you, if you happen to be a person who wants a lot of privacy, you're going to enter, enter a lot of false information, false email addresses, false, false dates of birth into databases. Now the insurance machine learning model may say, wait, this person looks really shady. I'm going to charge them high premiums, and you thought that that was because they were a sketchy individual, actually they just wanted privacy. Um, there are more problems coming up here with automated hacking systems. The US government's funding a lot of this stuff. Um, uh, it creates new business models, uh, some really frightening ones for the people who make malware. Hey, I can use automated hacking systems to encrypt people's files and then charge ransoms to decrypt them. I'd love to see business models on the other side where there's more AI being used to prevent people from getting their computers hacked. Um, all of this is narrow AI. I'm not going to talk about the general kind of sci-fi artificial intelligence where we get another intelligent species joining us on the planet. I don't think that's likely to happen in the next 10 years. After that, 10, 20, 30 years, bets are off. Uh, I'm happy to s discuss it over drinks, but I think the speculation on that front is slightly premature most of the time. All right.